Everybody and welcome back. We're so happy that you are deciding to join us again. Uh, my name is Michelle Lachapelle. And I'm Kelly Bull, and this is Women of Worth. And uh, this is our second show, so we're really, really excited to showcase uh, a new or an organization here in town called Girls on the Run. And um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the last show. It was so exciting to have Marcia and Marie here. Um, they were the Perfect first guests, I have to say, don't you think? We did. Um, we were thrilled to have them. Yeah. I personally learned a lot. Um, mm -hmm. While you have known these women for some time, uh, it was my really first encounter with them, and I just felt so comfortable and learned so much. And now I'm following um, Marsha's page, which has been very inspirational. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that that was a great uh, lead off for mm -hmm. us. And uh, now today we are continuing um, to go down that road about talking about women, but we, as we all know, women come from, you know, little girls. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and so, Michelle, I'll have you just kind of go into... Well, f before we even started that, I was talking to you about talking about nerves, about how, oh, yeah. how nervous and nerve-wracking it was to do our first show, um, you know, just all the technical things behind the scenes and and you know even how we're gonna start so it was it was the nerves were getting to me and I remember saying to my mom even before um, we started doing the show um, I the, the concept was in my my brain and uh, I said mom why am I gonna do this what why what you know who am I to be doing this and my mom said well why not you and um, I just thought that that was so inspirational. And my mom is just a strong person, and she lifts me up whenever I need advice. And um, so I just thought to myself, you know, we're doing a show uh, about women for women, so that we can sh we can be lifting other women up. That's and I just always want to remind women to surround yourself with really good, strong people around you. It doesn't even necessarily have to be women, but surround yourself with good, strong women, uh, people. Um, that will support your dreams and uh, and keep you moving. So that's um, that was my little uh, little spiel for today. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And I guess that show did very well in terms of views we're hearing. So I'm sure this one will be just as popular, and um, I'm sure a lot of you out there will learn a lot and maybe again, be inspired in a different way. Um, this is a difficult time for all of us right now. We're going through many challenges, mm -hmm. living through this um, unbelievable pandemic. So we just thought bringing a little bit of hope and um, you know, focusing in on some positive mm -hmm. would be helpful not only to our community, but you know, to whoever who can, who can tune into the show. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thanks for having us. Yes. So we're going to introduce our first two guests. Um, well, our first two guests are two guests for the show. Um, there is an organization in uh, Northbridge right now, and it's called Girls on the Run. And um, it has been founded and run by uh, Karen Spencer, who is to my right here. And uh, Katie Esposito also is uh, one of the staff members yes. of, for Girls on the Run. So welcome, uh, Karen and Katie, to our show. Thank you for having us. You're We're welcome. so excited to be here today. <laughs> Good. And the opportunity to talk about our program, um, mm -hmm. you know, we're just thankful to be here. So yeah. thanks. You're welcome. Now, um, Girls on the Run, for uh, those who don't know what Girls on the Run is, I know what it is because we have some grandchildren that are actually participating in Girls on the Run. But you just tell us a little bit about Girls on the Run. Yeah, sure. It's um, So we're an after-school program for girls in grades 3 through 8. Uh, we run two programs. Uh, we do an elementary school program for grades 3 through 5 and then a middle school program for grades six through eight. Um, and we follow a curriculum. It's actually a national program. 
and it was founded back in 1996 actually and it's in every state in the um, in the country and um, back when my daughter was younger uh, she's now in college I um, had found out about the program from a friend of mine uh, she had read the book by the founder of the national program uh, called Girls on Track and at the time um, her daughter was going through some struggles in her life. Um, she was in fourth grade and she was being left out at school, a lot of exclusion uh, types of things, and her friends were um, telling her they, you know, she couldn't play with them at recess because she didn't, couldn't do a cartwheel, that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. And um, I'm one of seven. I'm actually the youngest of a, a big family. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, thought that was crazy. Like. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I would stand there and do cartwheel after cartwheel, uh, mm -hmm. you know, alongside them. And she said, oh, I could never do that. Um, so my friend read this book and she thought, oh, this is you. Like, you should do this program. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's just such a smart curriculum. And when I say curriculum, like, we actually follow a lesson plan, um, but we integrate running into that. Um, so the girls have... Um, they're active, but they also don't even realize they're running a lot of the times so, because we're talking about like what it means to be a good friend mm -hmm. and how to communicate your feelings in a healthy manner. Um, and how do, you, how do you deal with bullying? How do you deal with cyberbullying? Um, so we're kind of navigating like middle school and getting them ready uh, for all that life kind of throws their way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just, you know, we use a lot of the tools in our own lives, honestly, as we grow and, mm -hmm. and try to communicate with the relationships that we have uh, with our husbands and things like that. And it's just really so smart. Like, I can't say enough about it. And it just, you know, my daughter actually never got to officially experience the program because by the time I got it off the ground, mm -hmm. she was too old for the program. But mm -hmm. she's been kind of like the first Mm -hmm. test uh, study in this area so I use I still use all the stuff on her but um, yeah I just can't say enough about about it and how did you get involved Katie well I happen to know Karen from the gym so I kind of got roped in if you will when I first <laughs> heard about it um, I didn't know anything about the program and when you say girls on the run I grew up with two older brothers and so I had always played sports and she had asked me to be a coach so I initially thought, you know, what is this? And I'm not a runner, I'm more of a, a sports-oriented person. So when I started coaching, I didn't realize that you were following the curriculum and um, using running as a tool so much. Um, so it was great because I didn't have to be a runner necessarily to do this mm -hmm. program or to coach it. Um, but I found, like she said, looking through the curriculum and teaching it to these girls, as a coach, you get so much out of it. And it was amazing to watch these little girls take these tools and use them with their friends. Mm -hmm. uh, she talks about bullying and all that, and a lot of the girls would slow down and use the curriculum, and they'd come back with letters that they've written to friends. And it was just so impressive to see how they dealt with their relationships at such a young age. And I just think that whether I played sports or, or whatever anyone else has done, <clears throat> it was just something would have been beneficial for anyone at that age, I think, just to use mm -hmm. communication properly, mm, definitely. you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I got involved that way, and then we just started getting so much bigger that she needed help mm -hmm. with the actual program. So we're just continuing to expand, and now we're um, just trying to make sure every girl in Worcester County has the same opportunity to get the program. So how many, how many um, towns are you doing right now? Uh, so we cover all of Worcester County, but um, with COVID, we only have nine teams this season. Mm -hmm. So we're at eight sites. Um, we've had to kind of pivot and adjust um, because the schools are closed or they're doing remote learning or hybrid and things like that. They're not allowing after school programming. And I would say 95% of our um, girls were served in that capacity. Mm -hmm. It was an after school program. So this season, we've really focused our efforts on like the Wayton Community Center, the Rockdale Youth Center. Um, the gym where we work out are, um, is gracious to have us there. Um, you know, we're at a couple of parks in mm -hmm. Leominster and um, Shrewsbury and things like that. So this season it's been challenging, but typically we serve between 20 and 25 um, locations in wow. both spring and fall. Wow. So every year we probably um, have, have served about 550 girls each, each year. 
Um, but great. we're hoping to keep expanding. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of little girls in Worcester County. I know. Do you ever have to turn any of them away? Like, do you have too many sometimes? Or uh, Well, because the team sizes are, um, you know, we try to keep them small so that it's a positive experience mm -hmm. for both the coach and the uh, team. Uh, this season, we've had to reduce the numbers because of COVID, but mm -hmm. Uh, typically it's between 15 and 20 girls in the elementary school mm -hmm. so yeah we have a waiting list at some mm -hmm. sites mm -hmm. because we have limited coaching right. um, we have you know the sometimes in Grafton and Shrewsbury and things like that and Northbridge always has a wait list too so is it because of lack of coaches um, it's sometimes it's like school capacity like because we meet twice a week mm -hmm. um, to have like more than one team going at once is always challenging and yes coaches mm -hmm. are you know, a lot of our coaches are teachers, mm -hmm. uh, people that work in the schools, nurses, adjustment counselors, um, moms, dads, you know, things like that mm -hmm. can um, certainly be coaches too. But yeah, mm -hmm. there's always, you know, the volunteers are always uh, a limited capacity. So well, we just want to do a little plug for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We need more looking, coaches. <laughs> always looking for coaches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So, um, what is a typical, like, workout? for the girls, like when they meet after school? Uh, yeah, so um, I'm coaching this season in Menden at uh, CrossFit South Central. And um, so every lesson is 90 minutes. So the girls will come, we'll do like a getting on board and each uh, topic is, you know, kind of carved out in the curriculum. So we talk about like what it means to be a girls on the run is the first lesson, uh, for instance. And we just talk about like what are the values that um, the girls think would make a good girls on the run team member and the girls are the ones that come up with the expectations oh, that nice. we set and we write them on uh, a board and you know we lead them a little bit if they can't really come up with it mm -hmm. but we talk about like what it means to be a good teammate and um, what are we going to do here at girls on the run we're going to have fun we're going to get active we're going to try hard and uh, those types of things but um, and so we do like a 15 minute getting on board kind of thing where we talk about the lesson of the day and then we move into stretch and strengthening, get the girls moving. That's usually about five minutes or so. And then we'll have a um, what we call a warm up. And a lot of times we, we just do a fun running game. The girls don't really um, realize they're even working out. Mm -hmm. And because we're saying like, all right, we're going to throw you a a scenario and you're going to try to come up with um, a healthy solution to um, you know this particular scenario could be uh, you saw someone in the lunchroom drop their lunch and and everyone laughed at them and what would you do as a friend mm -hmm. uh, how would what would that look like now go run a lap and think about it and come back mm -hmm. or we'll have them run a lap with a buddy and talk about it mm -hmm. And then they come back and they kind of give us their answer. Uh, so we do that as a warm up for about 15 minutes. And then we bring them all back in and then we have a workout of the day. So it might be another challenge um, that they need to come up with, um, you know, another thing. And sometimes we have them write it on a poster board or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's different every lesson. And mm -hmm. like the workout time will vary because we're trying to build. Um, lesson to lesson so that the girls are ready for a 5k at the end so um, at the end of the what is typically 10 weeks uh, this uh, season it's shortened to eight because of COVID mm -hmm. and um, so we come together as a full council and all the little girls think it's just their little team that's doing girls on the run and then they get to the day of the 5k and it's all of Worcester County and there's oh, like wow. 600 people there oh, uh, and they're all like a little nervous you know <laughs> um, and then they run a 5k and mm -hmm. we encourage them to run with family members mm -hmm. and running buddies mm -hmm. and uh, we make it a huge celebration for them and it's non-competitive there's no um, there's no one out there screaming at them to right. run and, right. well, um, yeah. Yeah. it's not yeah. timed or anything oh, so. okay. yeah. 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 Right. yeah so it's you know and the girls are just so you know for a little third grader to run 3.1 miles mm -hmm. Uh, or walk it or skip mm -hmm. it however she wants to complete it is such a huge accomplishment mm -hmm. so that's really what we're after is that you know we're working on the goal the goal is this 3.1 miles at the end of the 10 weeks but we work chip away at it over those right. you know lessons and we build their stamina so that we mm -hmm. get them ready for it at the end mm -hmm. so and the confidence they must have 
once they've achieved that. Yeah. So speaking of COVID, how will that look? Will that be more of a virtual event? Uh, or is it a virtual event, I should say? Yeah, so we're, um, and Katie can chime in here too. So we did a virtual 5K in the spring because we, we just had, we were one week into our season okay. when we had to cancel it. Right. Okay. Um, so we had uh, 300, over 300 girls registered for the spring that we had to cancel and mm -hmm. refund money. And then um, we had to cancel our 5K. And our 5K is a celebration for the girls, but it's also a really big fundraiser for us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, without that coming in, we were really struggling um, to, you know, our budget was really empty. So, um, the, so for the fall, what we've, we've done is we are having site-based 5Ks because we can't gather as mm -hmm. a big team. Uh, so we're going to be doing uh, individual 5Ks at each of the locations. So you'll probably see some little girls at the Northbridge track, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we're going to be hoping to run all of our 5Ks, nice. like, right around Thanksgiving. Um, and our team in, in Menden is a combination of Northbridge, Uxbridge, and Menden girls. So mm -hmm. we're going to try to run it at the Uxbridge uh, track. Mm -hmm. And um, just trying to keep it small, but also make it, you know, allow families to come support their girls and and uh, but at the same time we're also going to encourage uh, family members to run virtually if they can't be present and that is going to act as our fundraiser so we're hoping to get as many people involved with mm -hmm. it virtually yeah. um, and believe it or not there's so many people out there that are looking to run these races virtually yeah. Yeah. Um, all the runners out there are you know, still training and mm -hmm. um, yes. with all these cancellations of marathons and things like that, it's right. been it's been great that we've had a lot of people uh, support us in that way. So mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, we found that um, during this whole time of COVID, I know on the news and everything, all we see are negative things. But me personally, um, dealing with the program, I've had so many coaches reach out to me, people that reach out to me mm -hmm. and say, I want to help. Yeah. And they have jobs, they have kids, they right. have yeah. all these things okay. going on. Yes. And they somehow find a way to um, to help us and coach. Good. So it's been amazing with that. So I'm hoping that just continues right into the spring because I feel right. like people are looking for opportunities to do just that. I think that's exactly. happening all, all over. around. Mm. That happens at the senior center. You know, we um, people are always, what can we do? Yeah. You know, oh, I, I'll drive people to vote. You know, I'll, yeah. um, you know, what can, where can I make a donation? It's just, I just feel it so much people more now. People than are ever working before. from home more yeah. and um, have a little bit more flexibility in right. their schedules, mm -hmm. and it's nice to see them looking back to their community yeah. and wanting to give. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And we're in, like Michelle said, we're. We're seeing that very same thing. Yeah, too. people are realizing it's all about being connected. Exactly. Absolutely. When you take that away, that socialization, mm -hmm. people realize they, they need that. They yeah. thrive on it. And we need it now more than ever. Yeah. So, that's yeah. the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. Um, so, in a minute, we're going to show a video that I saw on your website, which mm. you have. That's a phenomenal website. If anybody wants to learn about Girls on the Run, mm -hmm. it's a phenomenal website. Um, if you want to plug, what, what's the website again? Sure. Uh, it's www.gotr-work.org. Uh, but you can Google Girls on the Run in Worcester County. Also, it'll come up. Um, yeah, so that's really the best way to learn more about us and, mm -hmm. uh, and get connected to us that way. So Kelly and I, I watched this video three times. I was so moved, I was almost moved to tears mm -hmm. when I was watching it because it really does show um, girls' um, perceptions um, um, of, and what the world uh, perceives uh, when, when you say, oh, a girl versus a boy, so on and so forth. We don't like to compare, but, um, and then it kind of shows how they can break out of that by um, being in programs such as Girls on the Run, and I just thought it was such a moving video, so I really, really wanted to show it. So could we show the video, please? Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Remember me? I'm the one who listened when I was told to be quieter. He smiled more when I was told to be nicer.
to want less, to earn less, to be less. I didn't know that instead of deciding who I would become, I would be told how to be. I'm still listening, so tell me, who will I be? Will I be who the world expects me to be? Or will I be who I am? Will I quiet my voice or will I face my fears? Will I shrink on the sidelines? No, we will run. We will run harder towards our dreams. We will run down our self-doubt. We will run to our sister's sides. We will run for office, run for joy, run for life. I will not be a number on a scale, on a class rank, or on a paycheck. I will be a daughter, a granddaughter, a friend, a student of life, an agent of change, a force of nature. And when someone tries to tell us that we can't, that we're just girls, we'll tell them that we're so much more. We're, we're girls, girls on, on the, the run. run. I love that video. <laughs> I mean, I, re I could watch that forever. It says so much really in just nice. a little, you know, it's great. Doesn't it really? I just, I love that video. Um, you know, I love, we will run to our sister's side. <laughs> oh my gosh, that gets me every time. It's just because it's so true. And, you know, as we get older, um, you know, we, you know, you, sometimes you get this uh, clashing. Um, you want to make sure that you're by somebody's side that you want to be lifting people up and um, we just it has to start with young girls it mm -hmm. has to it has to start that way and um, I just I loved I loved the card where it said empathy because I think that um, a lot of the times um, adults as well I mean it's that empathy is really understanding what another person how that other person feels mm -hmm. in a situation and I think empathy needs to really be taught understood and yeah. understood um, that if you are saying something wrong to somebody and, and they're sad you know understand that you caused that you know and so I think that these these um, these values are so so important to be teaching at such a young age um, that's really what I whenever it said I will run but to my mm -hmm. sister's side I just thought that was so awesome <laughs> I think it's true because I think you know like I said like when you're playing on a sports team as you grow up you're always um, given praise for how well you do or how well you beat the other team. or And this is where you start praising people's actions and how they treat others. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest things for these girls at this age, to realize the importance of that, like you said. A hundred percent. And, um, you know, and um, I'm sure you have a lot of stories about um, about the girls and, and, you know, even some maybe little stories that have, have occurred with some of the girls. But I, I did talk to a few girls. <laughs> that my, you may know. That I may know in my family. And, um, you know, it was, it was from the youngest to the, to the oldest. Um, it was really interesting to see their perspective of what I asked them. Um, I sat down with each one of them, um, three, three girls in our family, three of our granddaughters. And, um, you know, the youngest one, uh, I said, well, what do you like best about Girls on the Run? And she said, well, I like running. She just really likes the running part, and that was about it. That was about all I could pull out of her. So, um, but um, she was so cute. But um, but now, how um, old is she? Cameron. Oh, she's gonna get so mad at me. We didn't say your last I name. Know. She's, she's in fourth, fourth grade. grade. Okay, yeah. fourth grade. Let's she's just say that. Nine. Yeah, I'm just gonna say eight or nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but the next one. Um, Bronwyn had told me that um, she said everyone is positive, so that's always really good. Um, she said uh, she was always taught that um, to um, not look down on herself, but if she made a bad pass in field hockey, you know, don't look down on herself, um, just keep on going. So that was, that actually was a really, really, I thought that was a great thing to learn about herself at such a young age. And she talked about, um, we, we have, she loves the notebooks. I don't know. Do you have notebooks? Journals. Journals. Yeah. Journals. Okay. Yeah. All right. She said she likes yeah. her notebooks. <laughs> she really does. And she um, and it, and they and she says they ask us what makes us happy, and um, 
they, and they ask us what we like about ourselves. And I don't think I've ever been asked that question <laughs> in my life. Never mind. We're going to get you a journal. Oh, you're We're getting, getting you a journal. journal. <laughs> I need a journal, but... Yeah. But, you know, at such a young age, I always thought, when I was looking at your website, I thought, wow, I needed that. I needed Girls on the Run. I really did. Um, you know, for that self-confidence when, when I was little. Yeah, we hear really that did. so often from coaches and volunteers and moms of girls that are in the program. Mm -hmm. they, um, they learn what their daughters are hearing about at Girls on the Run, and they're like, where was this when I was right. young? Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, that just is huge for me. Uh, yeah, I totally, I, I just, I don't know, would you have participated in it? it Absolutely, you, because yeah? the programs that were available that when mm -hmm. we were younger, mm -hmm. um, while they were okay, mm -hmm. um, it certainly wasn't to this extent and mm -hmm. involved, and you are the whole thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not just about the physical activity, you are about the person and um, who you are you know, who you strive to be and um, dealing with all the stuff that these kids dealing in, in school and the mm -hmm. peers pressure and the peer stuff and the social media stuff and, and everything that they're dealing with, mm -hmm. this is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I hope, um, well, I know you have a wonderful wait list here in Northbridge, but I hope other people in our community um, open their eyes to the, see something the value. that's avail available mm -hmm. um, to these young girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. To see the value of, Definitely. You know, of, of getting um, getting that influence with kids when they were at a when young they were age. At a young age, exactly. Yeah. Um, and you were an only child, yeah. so for you that would have been a great thing. It would have been. And I did know. do Girl Scouts. I did too, yes, yeah. And you know, yeah. that's, and mm -hmm. it's all great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I can just see how this would bring things to a different, level. that mm -hmm. higher level. Mm -hmm. um, and I also was involved with my church at the time and uh, education through the church. And so, you know, and that was a spiritual type of mm -hmm. growth. Um, but again, you have kind of captured everything, um, you know, as a little girl goes through the stages of her life mm -hmm. and then grows into, you know, a, a young adult. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have one more quote. It was it was a long one. So, um, mm -hmm. so Ellie, I hope you're watching. Mm -hmm. um, I had asked her, um, you know, what what does Girls on the Run mean to you? What did it mean to you to be in Girls on the Run? And she said. Michelle, I'm going to have to call you later because I really want to think about my answer. And I thought, that was, what a special girl she is. She just really is so thoughtful. She really wanted to think about what her answer would be. So Ellie said that Girls on the Run was a great experience for me. It taught me how to deal with certain situations, good or bad. It taught me to look at other people's point of view. The biggest message is kindness. And even a small smile can change someone's day. And she was. She said, "I was so glad that I participated in Girls on the Run. Yay. She just loved it. So, awesome. but I, I mean, I just think that that's. I mean, they always teach kindness. You know, everybody's like, oh, you know, kindness. And you know, they might even have that in school. You know, with the big words on the bulletin board, kindness. But what is kindness? You know, how do you act on on that? How how do you show kindness to other people? So I feel like when I looked at the website that you guys are showing them what kindness is and how you. What your, that your actions are kindness. You know? Yeah, I mean, and we hope that, um, like I always like to, at the end of the session, um, talk to families and the girls about, we're hoping that you walk away from this with an imaginary toolbox so that you can open up that toolbox when you're faced with the challenges. Because you're not going to eliminate, you know, someone possibly bullying you or, um, you know, someone saying a bad thing about you, whatever it might be, but we're hoping to give you the skills and the tools to be able to stand up for yourself, stand mm -hmm. up for your friend. Um, you know, one of our values that is really, um, I try to use it a lot in my life, is assume positive intent. And I think when you first explain that to the girls, they don't really understand what that means. You know, it's kind of a big, th you know, thing to think about. But if you always assume positive intent with whoever you're in a relationship with or your, your brother, your sister, your, your friend, your teacher, if you assume that they are, um, have positive intentions towards you, 
you're not gonna uh, be defensive. You're gonna you're gonna listen to what they have to say, and I think that's really where kindness for me stems. Is that I can have a kind heart with people, even if they have a differing opinion than me. Mm -hmm. uh, I can listen to them, and and we can agree to disagree. Like, mm -hmm. and I think right now in in our world, we need more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're hoping Absolutely. to start with these little girls, mm -hmm. so that you know, as they grow through life, they can always look back on this and, and learn from it. Mm -hmm. and, and you also encourage uh, girls that have gone through the program that later on to become coaches? Junior yeah. coaches. Junior junior coaches. coaches. Oh, you have junior coaches. coaches. So we do oh, okay. have high schoolers that can mm -hmm. be junior coaches, which has been great. Mm -hmm. We've had That'd a lot of fun. girls um, do that, and the girls love to see them, people mm -hmm. in their own community that maybe are on playing sports and doing something that they want to do. So they really look up to them, so they've been great mentors. Um, but we have had, we're a younger council, we have had some alum from other councils that have been going for 20 years or so, mm -hmm. or 15 years maybe, um, and they've come back to our area. And we've had some of them at coaches training and they stand up and we ask them why they wanna be a coach and they, they pour out their hearts wow. and they're mm -hmm. so well-spoken. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's fun to see that, the alum. Yeah. Well, you've laid the foundation, and then you mm -hmm. see them grow into mm -hmm. these pretty spectacular young ladies. Yeah. 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 Our first girls, we started in 2015, and Katie and I both coached uh, then. And we those girls are now in high school, and we see them. And, like, you know, we just highlighted one on our uh, social media. She's on the golf team. She's probably one of the best golfers on there. And, um, you know, we see girls go on to be – you know, cross country runners and athletes, but like, you know, they're in theater and they get up in front of the class and speak. And mm -hmm. it's just so amazing to see the confidence that they, they have always had in themselves. They just, you know, they dig in deep and find it and, mm -hmm. you know, they just show it and they're not afraid to show it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the video kind of touched on that a little bit, but yeah, I think society and um, even our own friends, like, you know, you kind of go through school and you might not want to be the smartest one. You might not want to be the one to raise your hand all the time and, or be the standout on the athletic field because um, people might look at you funny or um, judge you differently. And I think that, you know, we, we want to teach girls that, you know, it's okay to do that, to be mm -hmm. your best, to shine, to, to right. be confident, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's funny, um, I don't know if you remember Marsha talking about your, what your toolbox mm. that, that, it, that you have. You know, women specifically have this knowing in them, and it, and it, it comes right from, it comes from inside, that you, you're, you're knowing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what you're teaching, and you're teaching these girls to put in the toolbox so that they have that knowing, and they, they, can, they can say, you know what, I'm going to be the best I can be, because right. I have that confidence, and, you know, that they, so they have the, it's the same uh, concept as, as um, Marsha when she was Absolutely. talking. I thought that was really Absolutely. neat. Because we all know life is so hard. Yeah. And, but like you say, it, in order uh, to have those tools to face those challenges, mm -hmm. um, what a gift it is for those girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, so, Karen, I was just going to ask you um, when you decided to start Girls on the Run, um, how was that when you were starting your own? It's, a, it's your own business. Yeah. Okay, so what was that like starting your own business? Um, just because obviously we're a show about women, but I just want to always, um, you know, raise the question to every every woman that's here. Like, how did you start what you wanted to do? What was it a dream of yours? Um, to have your own business? Yeah, no, it was mm -hmm. not. <laughs> so, um, you know, I. I, I guess um, I've learned about myself over the last five or six years is that, you know, I'm not, I'm not intimidated or uh, afraid of a challenge. And uh, but honestly, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I and when I started the program, um, I just wanted to coach the program, but one didn't exist in Worcester County. So mm -hmm. I um, looked into. How am I going to get this going? Mm -hmm. And uh, met with a few people, and a couple of those people that we originally met with are still with us um, on our board now. But um, but yeah, honestly, I I didn't really 
I didn't really know how challenging it was going to be. I just jumped right in and, and, and said, well, you know, let's, let's do this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess uh, I talked to my husband and I said, you know, like he coaches a lot of sports and mm -hmm. things like that in his spare time. So I said, you know that feeling you get when you coach a kid and they never got a hit in baseball, but then they finally get a hit mm -hmm. at the last game? I want that mm -hmm. for myself, but I also, like, I want to give that back to kids in the community and teach, like, I always felt like I had this, um, like, confidence, but I never really knew where it came from, um, and I think it was, I was a scrappy, uh, tomboy, youngest of seven, had mm -hmm. four older brothers, and I just, um, I was always up for the challenge and mm -hmm. was competitive and things like that, so I wanted to, like, not only give that to my daughter, but like all the other little girls she was friends with. And, um, and just, you know, sports brought that in, in, out in me, I should say, if you go back to the toolbox. Like, I always had it in me, but I, I think I really found that in myself when I played sports. Like, I was very competitive, and, you know, I, I remember trying out for the basketball team. I'd never played basketball before in my life. <laughs> and my mother was like, what are you doing? Like, you've never even played basketball. I was like, yeah, my, someone, my field hockey coach told me I was, <laughs> I could try. run fast, so I should try. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and I wasn't the best, but I, I just hustled and tried mm -hmm. to learn and was just open and coachable. And, and I just wanted to teach other people how to do that, too, mm -hmm. you know. So, of course, my husband was like, of course you want to work for no money. <laughs> you want to start a nonprofit. Um, yeah. and, uh, but he supported me, and mm -hmm. we just, you know, we did a fundraiser our first year just to raise the money to get the licensing and the mm -hmm. curriculum and all of that. And, and then when I just started to tell people about what it really was about, they were like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, you should mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Um, and it's just snowballed, and I often tell a lot of people, like, it's been, I've been hanging on to the, the bumper of this thing since mm -hmm. uh, 2014 and just it's taken off because it's just so important and the mission is just so important um, that it kind of sells itself. Like once mm -hmm. you start talking about it, it's, mm -hmm. it's just so valuable that people, you know, want to bring it to their community. So Absolutely. Yeah. Do you have, uh, I think you maybe touched on it earlier, but do you have communities that are wanting you? in their, um, to come to their yeah, schools? Yeah, I mean, and um, we've organically grown for the past five years, you know. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, like, grown too fast that we didn't, like, know what we were doing yet, you know, like, right. uh, to be transparent, Katie's probably like, shut up. Um, <laughs> no, we're all about honesty. But honestly, <laughs> like, and honestly, and we're like, yeah, we can do that, and yeah. then we're like, we gotta figure this out. Like, um, but yeah, just just honestly, like I has just have just never been like um, afraid to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's mm -hmm. something my parents kind of yes taught to me. I just yep, She's I'll very do good it, at it. You know, well, you say yes, and then it follows suit. Yes, then it, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Then it happens. Yeah. So. Well, we I, I helped run a nonprofit myself, and um and we ran it from the ground. You know, we didn't have the backing of a national organization. We literally built it just. <sighs> By saying, "Okay, this is what we want to do," <laughs> we're just doing and, it, yeah. and we did it, and we had a 5K to start yeah, with for our well. fundraiser. But five, but nonprofits are so difficult to start with. But what the the magic was is that you have people that believe in your yeah. in your project. So we surrounded ourselves with so many people that just believed in what we were doing and knew our mission and and just wanted so much to help. And I think that that's kind of what you've done. Yeah. And you know, on your board and all your coaches and and uh, and you've built that community. You built a really beautiful community. Yeah. You know, with all these people. So I give you kudos because I know how hard it is. I Thank know you. how difficult it is to start. You know. Well, I have to say, you got all those quotes from the girls, but there's yeah. another granddaughter that you didn't get a quote from. Megan LaChapelle is our intern right now. Oh, is she? So I didn't know that. She's doing a fantastic job that. with our social media, oh, so everyone oh. check that out. Um, <laughs> I did Yes, yeah, Facebook, I Instagram, know. Megan's in charge of it. So. Excellent. And she is oh, a bright okay. light, that girl. So. She is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She definitely yes. is. Yes. Wonderful. Oh, I, I guess we I need didn't to get a quote that. from her. I know. <laughs> I get a Although she's around <laughs> us all day, maybe yeah. you shouldn't. <laughs> but Katie, your involvement is... Um, is uh, 
I, I'm not surprised at it because I know you just you're so athletic. You just love that. But you are uh, um, the only girl with two two brothers, and you have two, two sons. <laughs> Everyone often asks that, but I figure at some point these my boys have to realize they they need a good, strong, independent woman to marry. So mm -hmm. I figure they're going to meet these girls at some point. Oh, that's be a in great their, way to look at it. Their life forever. So it's a really great way to look at it. Whether it's friendship or whatever. Is there a boys on the run? Um, or uh, our mission is our mission is girls, but there is a comparable programming. A comparable um, I think it might be uh, called uh, Boys on Track, maybe. Uh, I don't know. That well, I would like hope so. Run, uh, yeah, I, let I me run. I think it's let me run. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So they're kind of starting their own little chapters uh, in the Good. area too. So. Well, I think that's. I think it's so important. I think it's you know important for for boys to deal with what they have to deal mm -hmm. with and girls to deal with what they have to deal with, and um, and I get that it was uh, funny. I just um, I just read a really interesting book, and um, in the book, um, the author was uh, really um, all about um, building her daughters up, you know, and and helping them out and talking with them. And she wrote extensively about her daughters, and she also has a son. And then she sat down with them one day and talked with them, and she said. I all of a sudden hit, it hit me. I have to bring him up to be a strong, be a strong uh, man mm -hmm. yeah. as well. I have to focus on him as well. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting because um, you know that's why I wanted to know if there was something similar for boys because yeah. you know, and it's not just about um, um, their self-esteem and things like that, which is just so important. But just how to m get along with girls, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, mm -hmm. you know, to coexist. Mm -hmm. Um, with girls showing the mutual respect, both sure. of them. Yeah. Do you do you do anything about dealing with boys and girls on the run, or is it all about just themselves and you know? We do talk about social media, which is somewhat of. Yeah, we talk about you know <coughs> it's more um, you know body image and mm -hmm. um, that sort of stuff. In the middle school program, it's a little more open ended, where mm. we let the girls kind of lead more of the conversation. Right. So. Um, but we, you know, we let them guide, you know, talking about relationships and what healthy relationships look like and how, mm -hmm. what an unhealthy relationship mm -hmm. might look like and, and asking those kind of questions, yeah. So we talk, kind of talk about it in that way. That's really, really important. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, when I was looking um, at your website, um, they had, um, I guess it's IDEA, I-D-E-A, mm -hmm. and the different um, things with that, which could you go over that with us? Yeah, so diversity, inclusion, um, and just, we're trying to... What was the first one? Inclusion? Inclusion, inclusion. yeah. Okay. Inclusion, I diversity, <laughs> equality, <laughs> access, and inclusion, yeah. So um, just, we're trying to, uh, just because it's called Girls on the Run doesn't mean that uh, someone that has a handicap or is in a wheelchair or has... Um, you know, learning disability mm -hmm. can't do our program. Mm -hmm. So we modify certain things and we, we teach our coach, Katie and I's job is to help uh, teach coaches how to deliver the program to that. So right now we're trying to work with Flexible Fundamentals, which is an organization here locally, um, and give them some what we call girls at home kits so that they can work with their um, special needs students so that they can learn these um, things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting more into the IDA um, kind of things and, and learning more about that um, as we go, yeah. And um, so do you have scholarships for girls that um, can't afford to join Girls on the Run? Yes, so we, uh, we are a nonprofit, so we offer financial assistance to anyone mm -hmm. that needs it. Um, so we have girls in at Girls Inc. this season that are on full scholarship in urban areas. Uh, so we always we're always looking for grants, and uh, that's why we do a lot of fundraising so that we can uh, pass that on to girls that need it. So we do charge for the program. Um, we charge 165 for the eight week session right now, but um, but we offer assistance on a sliding mm -hmm. scale basis to anyone that needs it. Uh, so. Usually on a typical season, we have between 45% uh, scholarship rate. Wow. So we try not to let any Turn barrier, yeah, 
get in the way of the girls mm -hmm. receiving access to the program. Yeah, and as we're growing, I feel like there are a lot of corporations, like we just got a grant from TJX that covered um, the cost of the team, which was great, so. Cost of the whole team? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Which is helpful. Thank you, TJX. Yes, yes definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, so do you, um, I had a question that just flew right out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah, yeah. Scholarship. It'll come back. Scholarship. So you do a lot of training for these coaches then. <laughs> yes, and unfortunately this past COVID time was all online. So yeah. sorry, coaches, it was a lot of <laughs> online work. But um, yeah. yes, it's more fun to do it in person because we of get to course. know our, our um, coaches. But we're really excited about the site-based 5Ks to actually see these girls for the first time and our coaches. Right. So that'll be mm -hmm. nice. Um, Do you want to talk about the different, like what we teach mastery climate a little bit? Um, yeah, so, and we kind of talked about this with sports, but, you know, during our, our practices, we're trying to remind the girls that you're just trying to make yourself better than last time, and you're competing against yourself. So, um, not a competitive environment, you know, don't run faster than Julie. Um, it's more about do better than you did last time, mm -hmm. yeah. So, it's very different from, you know, sports, like mm -hmm. I said, this age, so... Um, the girls seem to really rise up to that mm -hmm. a lot more encouraging. I think, I think isn't that a lot in, in 5Ks or even, you know, it's really mostly going your personal best. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, most people do? I don't Yeah, because there's one I winner. Five Ks, there's only so. one winner. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's more like your personal best. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're in your program, do you... Um, talk about bullying at all in school and how do you go about talking about that? Um, yeah, one of our lessons, we um, it, we have a few different curriculums that we follow uh, from last, uh, season to season, but we always touch upon like um, bullying and, and one of them is uh, s stand, what, by, be a bystander or a stand buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Did I say yeah. that right? So, um, and just we teach we teach the girls how to stand up for yourself, but mm -hmm. also how to stand up and not uh, let somebody else mm -hmm. be bullied. You know, and that's not always easy, no. especially if that person is a friend of yours, mm -hmm. and they're not they're saying something that's not so nice to somebody else. Um, you know, I've even done it in my adult life. You know, how when I have a couple of friends standing around talking about somebody, and I'm like, that isn't so mm -hmm. nice. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and. I hope that my friends would call me out mm -hmm. if I'm doing something like that because we're all, you know, humans. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, just trying to support each other and lift each other up to be the best version of ourselves. And that's, you know, what I strive to be, who I want to surround myself with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I'm having a bad day, you know, Katie will snap me out of it, you know, and just surrounding myself with people that I know have my back mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and want, you know, the best for me, right. too, so. And watching these girls go through the program, they're not obnoxious little girls that stand up and are ridiculous and co overly confident. They're standing up, like you said, mm -hmm. respectfully mm -hmm. for people mm -hmm. and saying it in a way that is respectful, and I think that's, right now, very important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I think that it's so interesting because when I, um, from our last show, um, Marsha was on our show and she talked about, um, there was quite a few things that she talked about that are so similar to what you guys are talking about with younger girls and she's talking about it really with, with, older. with, with women, with mm -hmm. women. Um, and one of them is she talks about the me first movement. Mm -hmm. It's, um, and, and what, how she calls it is it's not, it's not a selfish movement. So what you were just saying kind of rings true. It's not a, um, it's not, oh, I'm first, mm -hmm. you know, back all away. Me. It's, it's all, that's not what the me first movement is. It's, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things for myself first so that I can be the best person I can possibly be so that I can bring it out to the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, that's exactly. What, yep. you, what you guys are doing. And so it's so interesting that, you know, we had Marsha on and then, mm -hmm. And now you guys are just showing us that you're starting way down here. You're mm -hmm. starting at those younger ages. Mm -hmm. That is so, so important. Because as another woman on our show was talking about, she talked about toxicity in the um, um, workplace. Oh, yes. And, um, I, I did so, say that, yeah. Corporate. Yeah, yeah corporate. Yeah. corporate. Yeah. It's so interesting because, you know, um, you're teaching these girls the tools to stick up for themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, um, you know, maybe my generation... 
um, our, our generation. <laughs> really. um, You're going to call me middle-aged? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I think we are. Oh, well, we can come up with a better term. <laughs> um, um, but, you know, if it, it's just, um, you know, I... I don't know, um, and, and somebody had told me, said this to me today, actually. Bill said this to me today. He said, you, um, at a certain time in my life, I would not have stuck up for myself. And I did not. And it had happened in, in the workplace, you know, a couple times with two different bosses. And I did not stick up for myself. Mm -hmm. And right now, mm -hmm. I would stick, stick up, up for myself. myself. Yeah. Because I really learned. Mm -hmm. I've learned through um, just experiencing so much in, in my life and, and surrounding myself with positive people mm -hmm. and, and just really getting that confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. Where um, So Kelly's my boss, so I won't put up with it. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Because <laughs> you can see I'm so toxic. <laughs> We, we have a great, it's a great work environment, so I won't, I won't say no, anything. But exactly. it's just so interesting that there's such a, um, you know, that you guys are really, you know, trying to get to these girls. I, I just um, wish these programs were, that there were more of them, mm -hmm. that you could reach so many girls. How, how do you actually um, advertise to these girls? Like, do you go into the schools? Like, what do you do? How do you, how do you get word out that Girls on the Run is starting? Well, for you know? so long we were going, um, we were going into schools, um, but Usually we would have a parent call and say, I'm interested in this program for my little girl. So my first question is, want to be a coach? Right. Um, but they're usually, you know, at a school, mm -hmm. and I usually get a contact from that person, and we kind of figure out a way to get the program started at the school. Um, but with COVID, what we're doing is we're trying to be very creative and look at any sort of center, any parks um, that are available. So, like, for the spring, if you're interested in the program, um, call me. And we'll figure out what's close and what we can make happen around in that town. So, for example, uh, just down the street from here is the Rockdale Youth Center. So, is yeah. is that something that's um, how does that work? In so, that they're one of our teams this season, yes. um, and we they were a, a spring season team for us as well. Okay. Um, and the girls at uh, the Rockdale Youth Center are on a grant from TJX. Oh, so uh, we were able to get uh, funding from them so to be able to provide it for them for free. Um, in the Rockdale Youth Center, we have a couple of coaches over there with support from the community center as well. We have two teams yeah. at the community center. So, um, yeah, we deliver the program. The girls run in the back. Uh, parking lot and you don't need to have a track or a, mm -hmm. a large field or anything like that we you can modify the laps to whatever mm -hmm. um, space you have available right. as long as it's safe and you have access to uh, a bathroom and a covered shelter we'll we'll uh, we'll right. do the program you know that's wonderful yeah mm -hmm. yeah you didn't yeah. talk to no yeah no. Oh, okay but that's a that was another we just thought um, Showcasing that particular youth center yeah, in our right own down community. The street, sure. um, it's Jen just Castro. they're doing just wonderful mm -hmm. things um, for girls mm -hmm. and boys. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so um, we're hoping, Monique, I will be, yeah. Um, yeah. I know she'll be watching Monique. this show. So I will be reaching out <laughs> to you um, to uh, have her come on the show too. Because yeah. we'd love That's to great. hear her stories yeah. um, because she does so much and. Wow, what an influence she has, or her whole team has, on uh, the youth of our community. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, Jen Castro over there is doing such a great job, mm -hmm. um, you know, connecting with the girls, and she's been posting about it on uh, social media, and, and just, it's just great, like, just to see the girls, like, mm -hmm. wanting the program, too, is just great, you know. When does the spring one start? Spring well, that's another thing is that we think we can probably push it out to when the weather starts getting nice. So mm -hmm. probably later in April is when we'll start it because we don't even know when school will end, if they'll be in school. Mm -hmm. um, will it matter if it ends late July, June or right. early June? Um, so we're going to be very flexible with how things are going to go in the spring, mm -hmm. um, which actually seems to be working in our favor. Mm -hmm. I mean, more we can get it to more and more people by being a little more flexible. So, right. Yeah. We do offer virtual programming too, so, um, but we surveyed kind of our coaches and our families going into this fall season and they just didn't really want a virtual um, okay. component because the kids are on remote learning all day. Right, this is um, true. You know, but there, you know, some councils have found 
had some success with virtual programming um, across Massachusetts. Okay. But uh, for us, we just found we really wanted that in-person connection for the girls this season. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's such a great, it's a great organization. Just, Thank you. Yeah, I really am. I'm just, I, I had heard about Girls on the Run for, um, for quite a few years now. Um, and I'm sorry, Meg, I didn't know that you were <laughs> in it. Um, but, um, Are you surprised? I know. You guys would make surprised. great coaches. That's um, all I'm saying. Oh, just so you know. I'll now. get you guys some well, applications. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because I was like, I don't know if I can run a 5K. Well, yes, you can. So I used to, a couple years back, Michelle, yeah. I'd done a couple of fun 5Ks. Yeah. I think we could do it. It's a as, challenge. As There's we say challenge. to our girls, you can run, skip, hop, jump all the yeah. way. Yeah. through the 5k and I having know. fun while you're doing it so you don't even realize you're exercising that's yeah. right it's, it's, the truth. And all. it's the truth <laughs> you know we used to do 5ks for the nonprofit that yeah. i was helping to run and um and i would walk the 5k but i have a really cool picture of me pretending i'm running <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like... oh, you gotta flash that one up on the screen <laughs> exactly. for this one yeah i think you should send that into bill well, that would be really that would be great yeah. how many how many coaches do you need per town you know or it just depends on um how we many, need how two at each site so there's i mean so that they'll works put us perfectly. anywhere michelle anywhere, anywhere you want to go we could have them running around the senior center we could that's why right. not yeah. we have not the perfect space idea. for it yeah that's so especially funny especially now where we don't have our our own people there yeah. so yeah. we could we could do that yeah and you know we we all we, the girls do part right. of a community service project every um oh, okay. season so the girls have to come up with their own community service project and we oftentimes um the girls will choose the senior center Great to letters. give back to in their own communities so we've done plant flower mm -hmm. plants so if there's yeah. any needs that you yeah. have or see oh, that you want so um <laughs> You know, you, we have three Northbridge locations that are, you know, going to be doing community service projects. So if you some have, ideas. Yeah. Excellent. This could be a nice I little, mean, even if nice it's as simple as cards, you know, like. Because mm -hmm. um, they're all at home. Because they're all at home, oh, you know. That that we could do that. Idea. Something yeah, to like deliver to them. Type thing. Yeah. Or maybe just cards or. Well, we yeah. were starting the pen pal program, remember, before COVID. Yeah, that'd be we great. Awesome. literally had a list of people that they wanted to participate. Oh. Our yeah. people that were interested, yeah. we just have to enjoy them with pen yeah. pal. Imagine oh, that. That'd be Wise great. words back yeah. and forth. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah that would be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. And it would be uplifting to our people as well as your people. Yes. <laughs> words yeah. of yeah. wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? All right. Yeah. Well, Kelly, maybe okay. we've I guess made, we're signing up. The gauntlet's been, I guess, we're... Why don't yeah. we sign? Yeah, yeah right, no. hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we sign? <laughs> well, what, I guess I guess it would be motivation. I think that would be really I think it would be, too. I think yeah. it would be fun. I think yeah. it would be, you know what, I just, I love the whole part of just really um, working with the girls on just, you know, the inners, mm -hmm. uh, the inside stuff, and, and how do they deal with, with the world. So I think mm -hmm. that might be really interesting. So yeah. well, Some of those girls would feel the same way you do yeah. about the 5K in the beginning. So you yeah. yeah. might just... Yeah. Do you find that, that a do you find that a lot of the girls um, complete the 5K? Oh yeah! Everyone completes it. You I mean, don't have but, to run it. Okay, you can okay, walk it. Okay. But yes, I've I've yeah. personally run with girls that weren't ready. Like they they would walk and run, you know. Mm -hmm. And by yeah. the end, they ran the whole 5K. <laughs> oh, awesome! Because it was so exciting. Yeah. I think they just got carried through. So, like you said, they don't even yeah. realize. Nope. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was more proud, I think, than anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we have to wrap up. Yes, we do. It's been another oh, great show. Thank of, you so much. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, thank you both so yes. very much. We're Thanks so excited that you were here. Yeah. And um, and look for their pictures on the beginning because we're going to take your picture after this. Okay. So we'll put you on our show. And maybe you've got two coaches uh, out Yay. of this. But Karen Spencer Don't and talk. Katie Esposito from Girls on the thank Run. You. And Excellent. thank you all. And if you want to learn any more, go to Girls on the Run um, to their website. And they'll teach you all about uh, this great program, and uh, thank you so much for being here. And always remember, you're a woman of worth. Thank you. I love thank it. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.